guys, Sexy Chocolate Aries Love here, back with another YouTube video. Welcome to Vlogmas Day 15. And today we're going to be sewing and talking about Gucci. Razzo Gucci. Now, if you guys have never noticed, there is like these little videos on Facebook and on Instagram. And they like, there are like either men or women and they're doing their like makeup. But they're discussing like murder stories and missing stories on like crazy things and true events that happen so with me I thought I would give you guys one but with more of a fashion twist fashion murder so this is called so long the fashion murder and again we're talking about Gucci so perk up your seat sit down relax and get some popcorn because this is probably gonna be a long video if not long I don't know what it is so Marazzo Gucci as uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about when he was born, this, that, and the third. He was born in September. Um, I'm quite sure in the early eras of 1997 or in whenever. I'll look back on my phone. Um, I don't care. Anyway, he was born, born, and he started. He was a businessman. Let's get that out the way. With he owned. He owned. He was the head and owner of the fashion house Gucci, and he worked for his. He worked for the company in 19 something. Um, it's bad because I don't have the actual dates, but he worked for the company alongside his uncle, go Adol Adolfo or Adolfo or Aldo, and trouble started to brew. Now. They say Marazzo was bad. Like, he was bad with finances. And the man literally almost bankrupted the company massive times. He had to literally put the company in, um... I think he almost put the company in debt, <laughs> to be exact. Like, like, literally, he almost put the company in debt. And in 1973, though, he had sold a remaining stock of Gucci to InvestCorp. And Best Court owns Tiffany, by the way, I guess Tiffany and Co. And basically, the Gucci family no longer owned or associated with the Gucci company. Now, I don't know if the Gucci company is like the whole entire brand, half the brand, or like not just the fat, or maybe not the like the um, brand of the fashion part, but brand of like the stocks and like the business side of it, where you gotta like go on making deals and sales and stuff for like the fashion clothes, fashionable garments and everything like that in between. He had to sell back his stock, remaining stocks to the invest courts and it was over $170 million. So he, they basically didn't have no more, you know, association with the company no more. And I don't know which part was that because they still say he had some fashionable connections to that part of the company. So maybe it was another part of the fat business. Point and blank and simple, I would never put my company in debt to to no extent where I lose ownership of my brand and anything, especially if it had my name on it. That's the thing. But yeah, after that, he got into a relationship in 1970. He married his love of his life. Well, he met um, he met Patricia Pat Patrizia Regini in 1970. And they started dating for a while. After two years, they got married. But it wasn't on a great blessing approval. See, Marazio didn't get that good old blessing from daddy. Daddy didn't like who his name is Rodolfo. And he did not like Patrizia. He called that woman a gold digging, money hungry basically calling her a gold digger all she want is money fame and will be f and fuck her way up the social ladder he basically calling that bitch nothing no good he didn't like her he didn't want her to get married to her and they had two kids but 13 years later 1985 but before we get into that let me skip over to the next page Next place. So, 
Gucci has a childhood friend. We can call her a childhood good girlfriend because, you know, you can't tell me he ain't want to. Yeah, but childhood friend. Her name was Palom, uh, Poloy, Pol, Paoloa Frenchie. She was a childhood girlfriend. And she was invited to their wedding. And, <laughs> you know, they probably had a little couple ran into each other. Probably said, hello, how are you, how you doing, yada, 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 and so on and so forth. But, I introduce you to the, 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 the situation that will occur. <laughs> So, back to it. So, he married um, Patrizia Zia in 19, 1972. They have two kids together, by the way, two daughters. And, you know, dad didn't approve. But, you know, they lived together for 13 years. 1985 is where I call the fuck up and the most damning thing you can ever do to your wife. So, Mariah Zia told his wife he was going on a short business trip in Florence. That's and he would be back. Now, business trip, short business trip, I'm quite sure I'm thinking of, like, maybe two to three days. Because you don't go on business trips for long, especially ones that are short and don't really require too much of your attention. So he was only going to be going for maybe, like, again, two days, maybe one day, and come home later on that evening. But that's not the case. On the following day, he sent his friend back to the um to his wife in Mulan and tell her he is not coming back home. He is divorced. Well, he not returning back home and the marriage is over. That was all that she was told, literally. No why, no explanation, just it wasn't like damn. You ain't even giving a forehead warning from your damn self. You sent your friend back and told me we divorced, but you're not getting together. I'm not coming back home no more. But remember, I introduced you to Polo Polia Frenchy. Polia Frenchy, she is his childhood girlfriend or childhood friend, whatever you want to call it. But for five years, out of 13 years he was married with that woman, married to his wife, he was creeping with, well, she was creeping with Marazio for, for them for five years. She was cheating. Both were reeling that they had a bad marriage, they were in bad marriages, yada, 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 and that, you know, they weren't, they weren't compatible or nothing like that. So for five years they cheated. He brought this woman a luxurious apartment up in um, Mulan that's closer somewhere. I'm quite sure it's somewhere near, not close to his house, but close enough to where he can travel to and get to. And this is still why he was married to Patrizia, by the way. Now, I understand the value of it is just being fucked up because at the end of the day, you did not tell, like, you did, he didn't tell her none of this. None of this. Like, he was just cheating on his bitch. Uh, uh, bitch. I guess that business trip was, you know white was the girlfriend and <laughs> he decided eventually I'm just gonna call it off right now so he was scribbling when he borrowed an apartment up in Mulan and quite and he lives in Mulan with his wife and two daughters so it, again it had to be a close apartment where he can get to and from to and uh, to and from back quickly it was a short business trip y'all remember short business trip so she was the mistress. She was the mistress. Pol Pololia Franchi. Now, Gucci decided he's going to get a divorce. So in 1994, well, and not, well, since how he ta told Patrizia he wasn't going, he wasn't returning home and that the marriage was over, he started officially dating Pololia Franchi in 1990. So, after, before the divorce even happened, he officially just decided dating his first childhood girlfriend in 1990. His divorce was finalized in 1994. So, it's over. <laughs> and now he can start making plans for a new wedding with Pololia Franchi in St. Martins, Switzerland. And this is all happening in 1994. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, 1994. 
he has an estate in Switzerland, so yeah. He was going to he was going he was he was going to do with that. But consequences have their payment and you don't fuck with a woman who is scorned. So in 1995, this is what I call the death of Gucci. The death of Gucci. Gucci was on his way to work, arriving at his office. While going up the steps to his office, he gets shot. And he is shot, I don't know, at cl not close range. I think it was a silencer or whatever the case may be. But Gucci was shot. He was killed on the steps of his... He died instantly on the steps of his office. And it was done by a hitman for hire. And who hired him? It's wifey. Wifey was not here to play. She did not want to hear that bullshit. So, what happened? Simple. Wifey hired a hitman, shot her Gucci, and I guess for a couple of days or months, they tried to locate who really signed this up and this, that, and the third. They wind up finding that it was his wife. They convicted her in 1998, I want to say. Yeah, 1998. And they, told, and they said, um... The motive was basically jealousy, money hungry, and on top of that, resentment for that man. <laughs> she resented him badly. Although, she also wanted a half the estate of Gucci as well. Uh, and I hate to say it, I feel a little bit sorry for her. You did do her dirty in the most possible way. You were cheating for five years with your childhood best friend, and you left me. You didn't have the balls to come tell me, you know you wanted to leave this marriage and this that and the third you just straight up sent your friend back and say hey, look he told me to tell you the marriage. who does that what type of man does that uh, and then left and then not said another word about it and basically you was going to cut me off something, something less but also it, with the impending marriage between him and his new wife which would have been his childhood friend and she wouldn't have got it would have cut her alimony in half now, think about that. You're used to seeing a million dollars down there every other day as the official wife. Imagine being cut off and having two kids to take care of, and then you gotta be cut off half your alimony and half, and then, you know, that shit is like, it, it, for a millionaire, that would be damage control. Very bad damage control. And she didn't have nothing. <laughs> so she, 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 she was convicted. She went to jail. She spent 18 years in prison. She's officially home now. By the way, she came home in 2016. She's like 70 something years old. And yeah, she, she, I'm quite sure she don't give a damn. I don't know if she's living luxuriously. I don't know how she's living. But I know if she was, if her dad, if her husband was Gucci, I'm quite sure, well, not to say it like that. If anything, I'm quite sure the family is still trying to like take care of her or take care of the kids, not her, but the kids in general. And you know, yeah. But that's what happened. And she killed that man. She resented everything about that man. Now, let's talk about the similarities. So, Gucci, if you know if you know the story of Gianni, if you know the story of Gianni Versace, then Gucci's story shouldn't sound no different. Notice the similarities are they had a situation between being a person who was greedy, jealous of their fame, Envy, well, in better terms, it's envy of their fame. And basically was upset that they didn't have all didn't have all what they had and basically wanted the, them for it. In terms of reality, like Gucci married his married his murder. Gianni Versace murder didn't even know him. Like bitch, he was just mad at the fact that this man got a whole bunch of money and owns a multi-billion dollar fashion house and I don't own shit but a bunch of problems and situations and issues like that's the similarities between it. that's the crazy part all right but that's the differences Giamani Versace got shot and killed on his steps of his of his I think his house but mostly that's where he worked at um so we can call that his office um Gucci got shot in st on the steps of his office. Both, again, greed fueled the situation at fire. 
Although Andrew Cunanan did not know Gucci, he was upset that he had he didn't have anything of sort of fame, money, success, and anything like that. His wife, Mariah Gucci wife, was the same way. She didn't have control over the house of Gucci, which means there was a lack of fame, lack of attention, lack of um, money, especially if you get a divorce, divorce, and you know greed, greed. So basically, greed is the envy of all thing, and she was jealous of the fact that that man was literally about to move on and remarry someone else. Else, but I hate to say it, I don't blame her on that part because he didn't have the balls to even tell her, "Bitch, I'm marrying somebody else. I don't want you no more." Like he just, like he just straight left without even uttering a word. And Gucci didn't even know his attacker. His assailant just came by, killed him, and just said. Bye bye. Like you're dead. And it's fucked up because the reality is, is he didn't do anything to him, Andrew Kanan. He didn't, and do nothing to Andrew Kanan. He just told. He just was just an insane person, upset person. And in this world today, most people got you gotta look out for that type of stuff. Envy is the worst thing next to next to greed. He. When you get on top, there is envy. Nah, I said it better. And yet. And let me get this last piece. Please. Thing is though, with fashion murders, there's, there's, since they were done, oh, ice. With fashion murders, since they were done back in the time when murder was considered deadly but not many people were like hung or anything like that in between and, or in special term of going away for years because she just came home in 2016 so life imprisonment was not a goat was not a problem she had life imprisonment they did 18 she did 18 years so she coming home she came home perfectly murder someone now you're going to jail for the rest of your life My thing is though, that's not always the case. It's people that get murdered on different occasions and people don't even, on different reasons, and not many of them go to jail. Some of them only see half of what a football field should be seeing, half of what, a, what they should be seeing of a football field. And it's fucked up. I really, and that's pretty much it for the so long talk. Unless, let me see, let me tell you one strange fact about my cat. Now, you know how your cat is supposed to story go is that your cat is supposed to love milk. Love it. Drink it, cherish it, enjoy it. But there is a problem. My cat only loves sweet milk. Whiskers is a sweet tooth milk drinker. He only likes sweet milk. And he will not drink it plain. Sometimes he does, but it's like it depends on what's in it. It depends on if he really is truly up for it. But my cat doesn't like milk. He prefers actually water. He drinks water, to be honest. My cat drinks full on water. And not done yet. Oh, let me get up. is a finish not a finished piece yet but it needs an elastic bang in but this is a part of the cozy collection nice little remnant ignore the strands at the bottom no, I'm gonna fix them later but yeah almost completed guys and I will be introducing the cozy collection sometime next week thanks for watching guys hope you guys enjoyed the song long and I hope you guys enjoyed my little informational tea about Marazzo Gucci life and story and thanks for watching I'll see you guys in Vlogmas Day so this is Vlogmas Day 15 Vlogmas Day 16 and we are discussing oh no we're gonna see my jackets between fall and winter deuces